Trump threatens to ban WeChat, a Chinese app that's even bigger than TikTok. And it's part of the Trump administration's larger plan. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. U.S. tensions with China are getting tenser. U.S. President Donald Trump announced a major escalation with Beijing Thursday, targeting major Chinese-owned apps TikTok and WeChat, as well as their parents. It's a new executive order from Trump that bans U.S. transactions with TikTok owner ByteDance and Chinese tech titan Tencent, which runs the messenger app WeChat. This all comes days after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said America will purge untrusted Chinese apps from U.S. app stores. Untrusted Chinese apps? I hope that doesn't include Zhao, the Chinese app that lets you upload your image so you can swap faces with celebrities for a lark. Eight seconds is all it takes for me to morph into Forrest Gump. <laughs> I'm sure the Chinese government isn't storing his face in a database somewhere now. Although he does work for Chinese state-run media, so maybe he's not worried. Anyway, Trump's ban on TikTok and WeChat were presidential executive orders based on the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. It lets him ban transactions between the U.S. and foreign entities suspected of being a national security risk. But this is about something much bigger than that, and it could forever change China's influence over the rest of the world. I'll get to that in a moment. First, what is WeChat? I'm sure you've heard of TikTok, but WeChat is much bigger, with more than a billion users worldwide. Most of those users are in China, but a lot of people in the U.S., especially overseas Chinese, use it to communicate with their friends and family in China. But WeChat is more than a messaging app. There's actually no equivalent app in the U.S. that does all the things WeChat does. Take it away, 2017 Chris. WeChat started out in 2011 as a basic text messaging app. Today, it does basically everything you can imagine. Yes, you can chat with your friends, but also you can send them money through WeChat or pay your utility bills through WeChat. Grabbing a coffee on your way to work? Pay for it with WeChat. Rent a bicycle? It's on WeChat. Or be a lazy bum and take a taxi. That's also on WeChat. You can also buy tickets for a high-speed rail or flight, say, from Shanghai to Beijing. When you arrive, buy movie tickets. Then find yourself a nice hotel. All without leaving the WeChat app. So yeah, a mega app. The downside? It's basically glorified spyware for the Chinese Communist Party. WeChat is owned by the Chinese company Tencent. Tencent is China's second most valuable company after Alibaba, with stakes in several U.S. tech and video game companies, including Tesla, Snap, and Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite. And according to Chinese law, any Chinese company has to turn over user data to the Chinese government. WeChat collects a lot of user data. WeChat has full permission to activate microphones and cameras, track your location, access your address book and photos, and copy all of this data at any time to their servers. And of course, WeChat is also tracking your spending habits. But WeChat also censors what people can say in their private messages. It even censors accounts of people in America for talking about things the Chinese regime is sensitive about, like Hong Kong. According to internet watchdog group The Citizen Lab, WeChat's parent company, Tencent, created an extraordinarily advanced censorship algorithm to automatically identify combinations of keywords that it then blocks. In addition to censoring messages, it also trains users to not send those messages in the first place by blocking certain app functions until they stop, or banning the user's account. This is a bigger problem for users inside China because your whole life is basically on WeChat. But if you're in China, that might be the least of your problems, because what you say on WeChat can land you in prison. Tibetans have been jailed for wishing the Dalai Lama a happy birthday on WeChat. Falun Gong practitioners inside China have been detained for over a year for sending messages relating to Falun Gong on WeChat. People have been jailed for spreading news. 
spreading rumors, and making fun of Chinese officials on WeChat. Remember Dr. Li Wanlian? He was the whistleblowing doctor from Wuhan who tried to warn his colleagues about the coronavirus way back in December. He was detained for that, and eventually he died from the coronavirus. Well, you know how the police got him? He sent his coronavirus warning in a private group message on WeChat. So WeChat in China is both essential and dangerous. But WeChat isn't used as much in the United States. So what's the point of banning WeChat? In announcing the action against Tencent, WeChat's parent company, the Trump administration said that WeChat captures vast swaths of information from its users, potentially exposing the personal information of Americans and Chinese nationals living in the U.S. to exploitation by China's ruling Communist Party. That's definitely true. But as I touched on earlier, there's actually a bigger reason for the ban as well. For years, China has been trying to gain more control over how the rest of the world communicates. That includes trying to dominate telecommunications with companies like Huawei and ZTE, and trying to control the global internet, too. The idea is to make Chinese technology a foundation for the global flow of information and transactions, and thus to expand the Chinese Communist Party's leverage, influence, and power worldwide. And once the U.S. realized what was happening, it started trying to prevent China from taking over global communications. This goes back to the Obama administration and its attempts at blocking the Chinese telecom giant Huawei. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo lays out the ultimate goal in this statement on clean networks. He said, The clean network program is the Trump administration's comprehensive approach to guarding our citizens' privacy and our company's most sensitive information from aggressive intrusions by malign actors such as the Chinese Communist Party. Banning TikTok and WeChat is part of a larger strategy to purge Beijing's influence and access in U.S. telecommunications. And not just that. As the Lawfare blog says, it's also meant to degrade the attractiveness of Chinese-made communications products and services to overseas buyers as well. That could have the larger effect of stopping the Chinese Communist Party's attempt at global information control. But there has been pushback in the U.S. against the WeChat ban. The ACLU said the WeChat ban was unconstitutional. This is another abuse of emergency powers under the broad guise of national security. It would violate the First Amendment rights of users in the United States by subjecting them to civil and possibly criminal penalties for communicating with family members, friends, or business contacts. But a researcher for Human Rights Watch tweeted, I think WeChat is not actually a bridge between China and the world. It is a prison that traps the minds of overseas Chinese people as if they have never left China. It sucks everyone related to China into a black hole of censorship and surveillance. After all, there's a reason why people use WeChat's glorified spyware. It's because the Chinese regime blocked pretty much every non-Chinese communications app in China. And does it actually violate the First Amendment's freedom of speech to ban a Chinese app that censors freedom of speech? I don't know. According to the executive order, the exact terms of the ban won't be known for 45 days, which means September 20th. And depending on how broad the ban is, whether it's unconstitutional would be decided by U.S. courts. But I do know who's really against the ban. Corporate America. For instance, Apple. If the ban goes through, Apple might not be able to have WeChat on iPhones or sell it in their app store. And according to a million-person-plus survey in China, 95% of Chinese iPhone owners would abandon Apple without WeChat. Imagine Apple losing the China market. I mean, it would kind of be karma for Apple banning all those American apps in their Chinese app store because the Chinese government told them to. That includes, it so happens, the China Uncensored TV app that they blocked three years ago. But it's not just Apple that's feeling sad. 
Last week, more than a dozen major U.S. multinational companies called the White House about the ban. Besides Apple, some of those on the call included Ford Motor Company, Walmart, Disney, Procter & Gamble, Intel, MetLife, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, UPS, and many more. As Craig Allen, the president of the U.S.-China Business Council, said, for those who don't live in China, they don't understand how vast the implications are if American companies aren't allowed to use it. They are going to be held at a severe disadvantage to every competitor. It's always so sad when gigantic multinational companies can't make ungodly sums of money working with the brutal authoritarian regime. But this has historically been the Chinese Communist Party's strategy. Big U.S. corporations traditionally have been Beijing's strongest supporters in Washington, as the lobbying against the WeChat ban demonstrates, though their influence has ebbed under the Trump administration. Yes, Donald Trump standing up to billionaires and multinational corporations. 2020 just keeps getting weirder. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Greg asks, Chris, what actions, if any, are tech companies like Google or Microsoft taking against the authoritarian regime, the Chinese Communist Party? Well, that's a very good question. These are companies that could, for instance, be coming up with ways to break through China's Great Firewall. They could be making an encrypted communications app so people in the U.S. can freely talk to people inside mainland China. They could even just say no to the Chinese Communist Party's censorship demands. But usually, you end up with stories like Microsoft setting up shop in Beijing, or Google secretly developing a censored search app for the China market. As I said, corporate America has been the Communist Party's biggest ally in the United States. Hopefully, those days are coming to a close. Thanks for your question, Greg. And thank you for watching. If you want to hear me answer your question on the show, sign up on patreon.com slash China Uncensored and support the show for as little as a dollar an episode. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.